Hey guys, welcome to the next mini podcast from The Lost and Found. Uh, we would run a website for Xbox geeks and gamers and, and some techie projects and stuff. I'm Helicus. This is just a mini podcast which is going to be bringing you some of the latest news that's happening over the last couple of weeks. First thing I want to talk about is the Bungie news, uh, Bungie.net updates, which is a Halo update. It's coming out on the 23rd of September, which is Tuesday, so it's quite soon. When you next launch Halo, it will automatically up, uh, well, install an update for the game. It's worth checking out Bungie.net. This will tell you all about the update because there's loads of things that they're kind of improving in this update. Um, one of the main things that you're going to notice straight away is that there's variants on the maps. So you're going to have the same maps as before. You're also going to have additional maps where some of like the force field doors, at the shields are turned off because uh, there's lots of people complaining about various little tweaks on the map so they've kind of released um, alternate versions of those maps which would be really cool actually and the other, th other thing that they're doing is you can rank up slightly different and there's also some more achievements that you can uh, achieve when you're playing on matchmaking and stuff so it's really worth checking out what that update is going to contain uh, don't worry you're not going to lose any experience you, you carry on with your experience as normal and if you're playing on the 23rd make sure and you haven't had the update make sure you turn your xbox on and off again uh, off and on again in order to make sure that you're logging in once the update's released you know what i mean so you're not still playing while other people are playing on the update so that'd be cool the other thing that's happening is the new ipod's been released and um, well will be released there's a new ipod nano and um, it's released in the 8 gig and a 16 gig version slightly cheaper than before mainly because the iphone's out now and um and that obviously came in quite cheap with the contracts and stuff so they released the Nano slightly cheaper than before so for an 8 gig iPod Nano in the UK is £109 which you can get on play.com um, they're doing a pre-order which is going to be released on Monday so it's actually going to release pretty soon size wise it's the same as the other one you could get 8 gig in the other one but you can also get 16 gig now I think that's 150 quid. They're releasing them in various colours, and the main difference is, whereas the last iPod Nano was very short and squat, this one's very long, almost like a mobile phone kind of shape, and the screen's quite tall, um, so the dimensions are slightly different. What they're hoping you'll do here is, when you're watching a movie, or when you're doing flicking through your cover art, you can turn the iPod sideways, and it'll rotate the screen so that you can watch the movie in the, in the correct aspect ratio. And, um, and same with the cover art, you can flick through like that. So they've built in this sensor so that it, the iPod knows which way up it is, which is something the iPhone did, and it was probably time that they updated with their iPods as well. Um, other than that, the shape of it is kind of more oval shaped, the corners are rounded off, so it's almost going back to the older iPod shape, um, but obviously the screen's a lot better than it was before. The other thing that they do is, in order to shuffle tracks, you can actually just shake it, which is kind of novelty. Um, and I'm not sure how it's going to work when like you're jogging or it's just in your bag if you run whether it's going to skip to your next track and then your next track that would be a pain in the ass so I'm not sure how that's going to work and uh, maybe the hold function will disable it, we'll see the other thing I want to show you is um, some video conversion software which is free uh, I don't want to pay for software, I always want to find legal free software this is called Super and it's made by a company called eWriteSoft. So if you go to eWriteSoft.com slash super.html, you'll get to their website. It's a very basic looking website uh, because it's just freeware. And if you download their software and install it, it runs really well. It's quite techy looking. Um, I'll take you through a quick conversion process so you can see how it works. But w the reason I've looked for this software is that it will convert FLV, which is like flash video, so it's like uh, YouTube and and our podcast and whatever really any any kind of internet based video that's, that's, that's the flash player you can download the, the video from it um, and you can convert it into super so that you can burn it to a DVD or you can just store it on your computer and play it in like Windows Media Player and stuff like that okay guys this is super um, it looks very technical but don't be too put off it's fairly straightforward follow the numbers through the top here so first of all select what kind of video format you want to convert to there's loads on here so you really got to know what it is you're converting for it does kind of give you hints like for your pocket PC or whatever or for different phones and stuff um, if you're not sure then just go for SVCD which is kind of a standard MPEG video compression that would be cool 
um, I'm going to convert a flash video which I've downloaded from YouTube and we're just going to convert it to an MPEG so I can like burn it to a DVD or whatever. Um, you can leave the output video, the codec and the audio codec are already pre-selected and they'll work fine. If you want to change the actual ratio of the video you can do here. Uh, it automatically sets 5 by 6 which is quite an odd aspect ratio. Uh, normal TV is 4 by 3 so feel free to just go for that one. Uh, 25 frames per second is PAL standard. Uh, if you're in America let's go for 29. Audio frequencies are fine. That 44 kHz uh, 44 is fine and bitrate is fine. Cool. If you right click down here in the bottom and click add multimedia files direct on here just through your explorer to, to the FLV that you want to convert mine are all here um, we'll just select a video here okay it's already ticked it in the list you can add l like a whole list of, like a batch of files that you want to convert in one go I'll just do one so you can see it happen if we click encode it will start the encoding process it doesn't take too long it takes a couple of minutes Okay, it's completed now. It took about two minutes. Um, it automatically creates an output folder for you, which you can navigate through to. It's, it's under Program Files on your main hard drive. Then, if you go to Ewrite Soft into that folder, and then into the Super folder, there's a folder that's created called Output, and it'll pop the video in there. But you can right-click here and do Output File Saving Management. It'll then let you select which folder it output to. Same changes or discards here. Um, if I check my output folder, yeah, there's the video as an MPEG. Um, and, and it's okay, guys, that's pretty much it for today. Um, we'll be back next week with a full podcast, which will be the loss, the the last in the Nottingham series, from uh, me and to Mac. Okay, until then, guys, bye.